It's Monday. Inspector Dr. Rose Sparkle is sitting in her office reading the newspaper. She's enjoying her coffee with some gingerbread. Oh, for heaven's sake. Hopefully, there is not another crime to solve. Good morning, Inspector. I hope you enjoyed your Christmas holidays, but I have some really bad news for you. What is it, Miss Baker? The famous actor Jonathan Pearl was killed last night. Ugh, the day has just started and there's another dead person. What is going on in the city? Tell me more about it, Miss Baker. Were the stupid police not able to solve it? Unfortunately not. Jonathan Pearl was home alone while his wife was at a friend's party. Apparently he was stabbed in the chest 13 times with a knife about 9 o'clock in the evening. Gosh, that sounds uh, terrifying. It is indeed. Is there anything else you can tell me about it? Well, the security cameras were off. That's too bad. Are there any witnesses? Not yet. Can you tell me the address? It's Sterling Boulevard 201 Orlando. Okay, let's go there. Inspector Sparkle grabs her pink fluffy bunny hat, puts on her brown leather boots and her white jacket and leaves the house. She gets in Mrs. Baker's car and off they go to the crime scene. Ten minutes later, Inspector Sparkle and Mrs. Baker arrive at Mr. and Mrs. Burl's mansion. In the driveway there are four police cars and an ambulance. They stop the car right in front of the house. As they get out of the car, they meet a policewoman. Good morning, Inspector Sparkle. Finally, you're here. We have been waiting for you. Good morning. Can you show me where the crime happened? Well, you're standing in front of it, Dr. Sparkle. Could you please step aside and let me take a look at it? Of course. It looks like someone stabbed him in his belly. Oh, in his belly? I thought it was his chest. I'm really sorry. I thought so too. Have you found the knife? No, unfortunately not. But we found some blue footprints in the snow right here in the driveway and in front of the door. Okay. Anything else? No, not really. The neighbors heard some noises, but I haven't talked to them yet. Perhaps you can find something that helps you solve the crime. Was it a robbery? Did they steal anything? We don't know yet. As far as we know, nothing was stolen. Thanks, officer. Let's start to the neighbors then. Inspector Sparkle and Mrs. Baker go to the neighbor's house to find out more about the noises they heard. Hello, who are you? Good morning, Mrs. Brown. My name is Dr. Inspector Rose Sparkle. He's my badge. Oh my god, what happened? We would like to ask you some important questions. What did I do? Nothing, miss. But you might be a witness. Where were you last night at 9 p.m.? Hmm, my husband, my two kids and I were in the living room with my sister's family. We were eating dinner together. Did you hear anything from the neighbor's house? No, unfortunately not, because we were listening to Christmas music and our kids made a lot of noise. Inspector, can you please tell me what actually happened? I will, don't worry. But I have two more questions. When did your sister's family leave the house? At about half past midnight. Were you drinking any alcohol? Well, we had some glasses of white wine, but we weren't drunk. Okay, thanks. So, can you please tell me now what happened? Well, your neighbor, Mr. Jonathan Pearl, was killed last night. Someone stabbed him with a knife. What? Oh no! Poor Mr. Pearl, he was such a friendly man. He just wished me and my family Merry Christmas two days ago. Can you tell me who the woman over there is? The one in the garden? Yes. That's the boss, Janita Scarlett Jefferson. Okay, I will talk to you later. Thanks for your help. Mrs. Sparkle, her assistant and the policewoman walk across the garden to talk to the janitor, Mrs. Jefferson, who is sitting on the porch. She looks very tired and she has tears in her eyes. Are you okay, Miss Jefferson? No, I'm not. It's horrible. How can someone commit such a terrible crime? I really liked Mr. Pearl a lot. 
He was such a helpful and friendly man. Anyway, there's no time for deep emotions now. I need to ask you some questions. Miss Baker, how dare you? You talk to her like that. Can't you see? She's grieving. Jeez, get over it. Crying isn't going to solve the crime. So, Miss Jefferson, you are the Pearl's janitor. Do you also live in this house? Yes, I do. Where were you yesterday at 9 p.m.? I was in the supermarket. In the supermarket? At 9 o'clock in the evening? Yes. Well, there's a 24-7 store just around the corner. So, when did you get back home? I guess it was about 9.30. Did you go through the front door? No, I always use the back door. That's the entrance to my apartment. We have found some footprints in the driveway. Can we take a look at your shoes, Miss Jefferson? At that moment, a policeman walks towards them with a knife and a pair of shoes in his hands. He is wearing a white plastic overall. Um, excuse me, Miss Sparkle. I think I have found the murder weapon. This knife here was next to the back door under these shoes. There's also blood on it. Are these your shoes, Miss Jefferson? Yes, they are. Are there fingerprints on the knife, officer? Yes, Inspector. Mrs. Jefferson, would you please get in the police car? We will take you to the police station to take your fingerprints. Miss Officer, could you please take care of her? Yes, of course. Please come with me, Miss Jefferson. The policewoman grabs Mrs. Jefferson's arm and leads her to the police car. Did our plan work? Yes, Vittoria. He's dead. So how did you kill him? Well, I stole the car from the post office and drove to Burr's house. At first, I thought that he wasn't at home because all the lights were out and everything was dark. So what did you do next? I rang the doorbell and Burl opened the door. He looked a bit confused because he didn't expect a package that late in the evening. Before he said a word, I pulled the knife out under the package and stabbed him several times. He screamed in pain so I covered his mouth so the neighbors couldn't hear him. He died minutes later. Fantastico, you did an excellent job. Mary, has Sparkle been to the crime scene yet? Yes, she has. She thinks the janitor, Mrs. Jefferson, killed him. The police took her to the police station. Good job, Jesse. That's a perfect revenge. On the next day, Inspector Dr. Rose Barkle goes to the Burl's house for further investigation. She knocks on the door. Mrs. Burl opens the door with tears in her eyes. Hello. Good morning, Mrs. Burl. I'm Inspector Dr. Rose Sparkle. May I talk to you for a second? Yes, of course. Have you got any idea who might have killed your husband? No, not really. Well, it might have been his ex-wife, Emily Fletcher. She's been very jealous ever since they got divorced. I don't know. Okay, do you know her address? Yes, it's 51 Madison Street. It's just down the road. Thank you, Miss Pearl. I will go and ask her. Let's see if she has got an alibi. Mary, could you please go and talk to Mr. Pearl's manager, Mrs. Vittoria Di Salvo? Of course. See you later, Inspector. Rose Barkle is on her way to Mr. Pearl's ex-wife, Mrs. Emily Fletcher. Her house is just a few blocks away. Good afternoon, Miss Fletcher. My name is Dr. Inspector Rose Barkle. I'm investigating the murder of your ex-husband, Mr. Jonathan Pearl. I have heard about it. Please come in. Have a seat. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, thanks. Well, Miss Fletcher, where were you on the 25th at 9 p.m.? Hmm, let me think. I went for a walk with my dog in the park down the street. Is it the park next to your ex-husband's house? Yes, it is. Did you see anything suspicious? Hmm, no, not really. Well, there was a post car in the driveway that was about to leave, which is very awkward at that time of day. Yes, that is suspicious indeed. Which color was it? It was yellow, just like every other post car. And it was more like a van. 
Do you remember the number on the license plate? No, I don't. But it looked like the driver's window was smashed. Okay, anything else? My dog was acting a bit weird. He wanted to go to the house, but I pulled him away and then we went back home. Thanks for your important clues. That really might help me. Have a nice day, Miss Fletcher. Pronto? Hey, Vittoria, I must talk to you. Can we meet at the graveyard? Now? No, next year. You idiot, of course now. Okay, give me ten minutes. No, I'll give you five minutes. Hurry up. Five minutes later in the graveyard. Did anything go wrong? No, everything's fine, but Sparkle wanted me to talk to you. I don't know when she will be back, so we need to hurry. She thinks we are in the park. Anyway, you were Mr. Pearl's manager, so you will need an alibi. Let's just say I was planning Mr. Pearl's next appointments. Are you stupid? At 9 o'clock in the evening, that's a pretty bad alibi. Think of something else. Well, then let's say I was at Chessie's house and we celebrated her birthday. Chessie can give me an alibi. Trust me. Okay, I will tell Rose about it. I hope she falls for it. Inspector Rose Barkle is at Mr. Burr's neighbor's house. Mrs. Brown could already see the inspector through the window. So she opens the door. Hello, Mrs. Brown. I'm back to ask you further questions about your neighbor's death. Okay, come in, doctor. What do you want to ask me? Well, can I take a look around your house? Maybe I can find some clues. Sure. If you have a question, just ask me. I'll be around. All right, thanks. Mrs. Sparkle walks into the living room. She can see some photos on the table. She picks them up and takes a closer look at them. In one photo, she can see something conspicuous. Excuse me, Miss Brown. When did you take this picture? That was on the 25th, the day Mr. Burl was killed. That's me and my family. We were here in the living room. Why? In the background, outside your house, there's something strange. What? Let me see it. There is a bus woman with a knife in her hand. Do you know who she is? I usually know all bus women in this area, but she looks unfamiliar. And is this Miss Fletcher and her dog in the background? Yes, she goes for a walk with her dog every day. Okay, I will talk to Mrs. Pearl to find out who the person in the photo is. Thanks for your cooperation. Good luck with your investigation. Inspector Sparkle meets Mary and they go to the neighbor's house to speak with Mrs. Pearl. Have you caught the killer yet? No, unfortunately not. But maybe I have an important clue. Let me show you this photo of Mrs. Brown's family. Can you see what I see? No, what do you mean? Well, take a closer look at what is going on in the background. Right in front of your house. Do you know who the bust woman is? I don't know. Well, her face looks familiar. Okay. Oh my god, that's my old classmate, Jessie Dark. I haven't seen her for a long time. We never really liked each other. Why did you not like her? I must admit that I bullied her at school. Do you have any idea why she was at your house on the 25th? No, not really. But I'm sure she doesn't work as a postwoman. She's a waitress at a cocktail bar in the city center. I just saw her there the other day. Do you know where she lives? She lived in Park Road 13, but I don't know if she still lives there. I don't think that Jessie killed your husband. Do you know her? N no, but I... Mary, you've been acting suspiciously for a while now. Why would I act suspiciously? I don't know. Anyway, thanks, Mrs. Pearl. I will pay Jessie Dark a visit. And remember, you shouldn't bully other people. 
What goes around comes around. I know I was young and stupid, but I never had the guts to apologize. Inspector Sparkle and her assistant leave the house. Sparkle goes to Park Road 13 to meet Jesse. Mary heads to Sparkle's office. Dr. Sparkle arrives at Jesse's house and knocks on the door. Jesse opens the door. Good evening. Who are you? Dr. Inspector Rose Sparkle. I'm Dr. Inspector Rose Sparkle. I'm investigating the murder of Mr. Pearl. Oh, a murder? Mrs. Stark, I'll get right to the point. What were you doing on the 25th at 9 p.m.? Hmm, on the 25th. My friend Vittoria de Salvo was with me. We were celebrating my birthday. May I take a look around your house? Um, yes, of course. Sparkle goes into Jessie's bedroom. Suddenly she sees a yellow post office uniform. What is that? My jacket. A post office jacket? Um, yes. Do you work at a post office? No, it's a friend's jacket. Mrs. Stark, I have a photo here. Can you explain to me why you are in this photo wearing this yellow jacket and a knife in your hand? No, as I said, I was at home. That's not me. Oh, come on. Of course that's you. Unless you have a twin sister. And I know that you don't have a twin sister. And I also know that your birthday is in June. So that's a very delayed birthday party. So can you please tell me now what you were doing on the 25th of December at 9 p.m.? It's all Mary's fault. Mary? Mary who? Your assistant, Mary Carol Baker. What does she have to do with it? She is a friend of mine. She told me to kill Mr. Bell because Mrs. Bell bullied me at school. I had to suffer a lot because of Mrs. Bell. Aha! Uh -huh. Now I know why Mary has been acting so weird lately. And who is Vittoria Di Salvo? She is also a friend of mine. She helped us, but she was not involved in the murder. Turn around and put your hands behind your back. You're arrested, Mrs. Stark. I will take you to the police station and all your criminal friends too. Inspector Sparkle handcuffs Mrs. Stark and leads her out of the house to her car. The following day, Mrs. Baker, Jesse Dark and Vittoria Di Salvo are at the police station. Do you have anything to say in your defense? But be aware that everything you say now can and will be used against you in the court of law. There's no point in lying anymore. It's too late now. Mrs. Pearl bullied Jessie a long time ago, so we want a revenge by killing her husband to let her suffer. You killed Mr. Bull just because his wife bullied you? Well, she deserved it. Unbelievable. I don't have any words for that. And why did you, Miss DeSalvo, and you, Miss Baker, help her? Well, Jesse is our best friend and Mr. Pearl was a rich man. We were hoping to find some cash in his house, but we could only find a few grants. And why did you leave the murder weapon at the crime scene? Um, I put it right next to the janitor's apartment door. I was hoping you would fall for it. You must be incredible stupid. Did you really think we would fall for that? All right, ladies, could you please stand up? You will be taken to your prison cells. It's not over yet. You will get a fair trial soon. Until then, think about what they have done. Maybe you will show some remorse then. Three policemen lead them out of the room. Dr. Rose Barkle has solved another crime. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.